wouldn't be a lawyer unless I had a disclaimer of some type. Um, so it's general information only. If you want to rely on anything on this, from this seminar, give us a buzz and we'll have a chat about it. There's, there's broadly four different types of restraints. Non-compete clauses are very, um, uh, they're very difficult to enforce. Um, they are occasionally enforced, but generally fairly rarely. Um, but restraints on, the, on stopping the provision of services to specific clients with whom the employee had contact for a specific period of time prior to the ending of employment, uh, that's the type of thing that might have a better chance. Um, Non-solicitation, um, there's some, there's some um, skill in drafting a restraint, which we'll talk about that a little bit later. And of course, you've got non-solicitation of employees or contractors. When crafting these things, you, you've got two, you've got these competing tensions. If you make it too wide, it captures everything or a lot of things, and then it's unenforceable. But if you make it too narrow, then the employee might find a way of circumventing it without um, uh, you know, breaching the strict wording of the clause. Um, so there is, a, there is a real sort of skill in drafting these, and it's, it's not easy. A blue collar recruitment consultant, I know there's a few recruiters in the room, um, was promoted to account manager um, and paid about 50k in 2009, so maybe around 75, 80k. Doesn't sound that senior, this is your more your, your general consultant, I think. Um, shortly after that, she resigned, for, worked for a competitor, took two large clients with her, more or less. And here's the restraint wording. The employee will not solicit clients, business and patronage of the company, and it had a cascading uh, saying, you have to do it for, you're not allowed to um, solicit for 12, six and three months. There was a definition of client. It was um, clients um, means the business, customers of the protected bu business with whom the employee maintained a direct business relationship. So we, it, it's not clients with whom the employee had no contact, it includes clients with whom she's had some direct business relationship. Who thinks that's enforceable? Yep, who thinks it's unenforceable? And who hasn't put up their hand? <laughs> okay, um, unenforceable. Held that business and patronage is not defined, includes business outside of labour hire. The difficulty with this clause was solicit clients, business and so what the courts do, or sometimes do, they've got a reluctance to do this with restraints if not drafted properly, is to say, well, clients, that might be okay, but business, that's probably too broad, put a blue line through it. But we can't put a blue line through it. We can't put a, a blue pen through it because the word and should have said or. 